we're here to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's February 14th here in Seoul, I'm Shin Yoon, and you're watching News Generation. Joining me in the studio is Park Yoon. Thanks for having me. Happy Wednesday, and Walter Lee. Lovely to be here. Good morning. Now, both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. As usual, let's start with our news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending on social media over the past 24 hours. The men's marathon world record holder, Kelvin Kiptum, has died in a road accident at the age of 24. The Kenyan athlete was killed along with his coach in a car on a road in his home country on Sunday. Kiptum rose to fame in his first full marathon, which was only in 2022. And last October, he broke the world record, battering his rival Elliot Kipchoge in Chicago. Kipton clocked the 42 kilometers in just 2 hours and 35 seconds. South Korea's online food delivery service industry, which had seen a boost during COVID-19, shrank for the first time last year. According to Statistics Korea on Tuesday, the size of the market last year was just under $19.6 billion, down 0.6% on year. This was the first time the market saw a downsize since related data began being compiled in 2017. And the agency believes higher delivery fees and the easing of social distancing measures have caused more people to eat out rather than order in. And the National Youth Policy Institute has found that 4 out of 10 young South Koreans choose not to go to the hospital if they're sick. The institute surveyed some 4,000 people aged 19 to 34. Out of those, 41.6% said they haven't visited the hospital in the past year. The biggest reason had to do with being too busy, and the next reason had to do with many young people thinking hospital fees were too burdensome or a waste of money. And the same survey found that most chose to go to the pharmacy instead and buy medication as a quick remedy. More than half said they were on their own when they were sick. Among those, 15% said that it was because they didn't have any friends or family they could rely on. And around 6 out of 10 also said they were very depressed. And the survey pointed to how millennials and Gen Z were in need of more affordable health care options. It also shed light as to how important regular checkups were, as well as the need for medical counseling. And Expanding this news feed to the studio, do you guys frequently visit the hospital and can you relate to the survey results? Um, I go do the regular body checkup every year, mm. once a year, but as you know, Yana, I am not one to go to the hospital when I am uh, I know. sore. A good example was the bad back I had exactly. over the last couple of weeks and I didn't go because you kept nagging me. And I know, I was... you, post you postponed it literally for months and you didn't go then. Yeah, I postponed it so much <laughs> that it, it fixed itself and that's the reason why I don't usually go. I would say like... I would also say that I'm too busy, but to be honest with you, it really does come down to me being lazy. Yeah. Um, but the only times that I do go to the hospital to make sure I'm okay or get like proper doctor's medication or prescription medication is when it comes to things like, like vomiting or body mm. aches because <laughs> being in our job, obviously, we need to perform on camera or even on radio. And I can do that with a bad back, but I can't be doing that while I'm just vomiting on live TV. Walter, so you basically push yourself to the brink yeah. until you're vomiting. Basically, if, if you can't see it, it's, you know, it's fine. <laughs> no, I completely disagree. I'm a big advocate of going to the hospital. I was very shocked when I saw these survey results because I think once you feel a little bit sick, you should go to the hospital and get medication quick or get an actual diagnosis from a doctor. And I think a lot of people from our generation, including yourself, Walter, have a tendency to self-diagnose, which mm. is very dangerous. But what about you, Kyun? Are you the type to go to the hospital frequently? Yes, I'm a little different to Walter, mm. um, you know, but looking at the statistics from the survey was a bit of a shock to me. I can't really directly relate to the main reason, mm -hmm. like being too busy, um, <laughs> because it made me think uh, maybe they weren't feeling too sick That's or true. sick enough mm. to go to the hospital or being a little lazy like mm. Walter. <laughs> you know, I regularly go see the doctors mm. whenever necessary as, you know, it's my responsibility to take care of my own health right. and I do a bi yearly um, health checkups in case there's anything wrong with my body, which my friends think is a little too much, but you know, at the end of the day, it's my body exactly. and my health and I need to take care of it. And also the healthcare system here in Korea is not as expensive as really the one in the not. US for mm -hmm. as far as I know. So going to the hospital for minor checkups uh, may not be too burdensome unless you have to undergo uh, like a big surgery. Um, right. And there is no reason to neglect minor symptoms mm. like your back mm. <laughs> or, you know, symptoms of throwing up to, and make it grow to something like too big that exactly. requires more effort and money to cure later on. So, and finally, I think you have to be in a healthy condition to start 
with to even think about helping others like mm. your family members and friends so you know health is wealth for exactly. me <laughs> health is wealth and i think a lot of people from my generation often just gloss over the fact that they'll never be sick because they're young <laughs> but every single time you actually become sick you really realize what kiyun said health is wealth it is <laughs> it's the most important prerequisite for you to do anything so hopefully we'll see more of our generation frequently go to the hospital moving yeah, moving on to our main discussion topic of the day we're now going to talk about a surprising trend among our generation and it's cleaning from Mary Kondo to Korea's very own Brian we've seen many particularly tidy public figures share their own cleaning know-how and it really captured the attention of many Millennials and Gen Z and before delving deeper into our discussion topic I'd like to ask you guys do you guys like cleaning if so why Yes, I can say that I'm a bit of a neat freak, <laughs> a bit like Brian. Um, I got into the habit of cleaning like on a daily basis ever since I moved out. Mm. When I realized that um, no one was going to clean yeah. my house, do any of the housework for me, unless I pay for a cleaning service, which I really couldn't afford mm. then and now. <laughs> so I think uh, many millennials at Gen Z's living alone also got into this cleaning a trend, especially during uh, COVID-19, right. when they spent a lot of time at home. Um, and apart from, you know, home workouts, cooking at home, I think decorating your home, you know, by neatly organizing your furniture, mm. throwing out any unnecessary items and making a room look like, like a hotel room mm. became a huge trend and went viral, actually. Mm. Um, now, so we see many YouTubers along with celebrities show their tidy, neat homes and share their tips on how to clean yeah. better uh, using different types of cleaning equipment. Uh, redefining what it really means to have a clean house uh, and for me I feel more relaxed coming back to a neat home after work because it helps me to rest better and I guess rejuvenate to I guess work better and harder the next day. <laughs> exactly and I think a lot of my friends and myself I think we could say we live in such a messy society and if you know what I mean. And it's messy like rooms. Messy <laughs> rooms. It's like bustling city especially if you're living in the capital or the metropolitan area you're living in such a bustling time and you just want to come back home to a cozy relaxed clean neat right. room but what about you Walter? Well I I can, guess I can brag a little because I'm actually kind of work friends with Brian and oh. he's been a person who always talks about cleaning even when we <laughs> are having casual chats between recordings right. he always talks about what he's doing with his house at the moment how he's clean so <laughs> what you see on those shows is exactly who he is so he's a clean freak I would say that I'm a person that doesn't like to be dirty but I wouldn't say I'm a clean freak You're in not a, a neat way. Freak. No, so um, I definitely don't meet the standards of my wife which I think <laughs> she is a minor clean freak in my opinion. She wouldn't actually be mad for me to say that because she does have certain tendencies <laughs> to have things clean a certain way. You know, I do the washing, you know, I wash the dishes, I wash the clothes, I vacuum daily on a daily mm -hmm. basis um, out of routine rather than it being a house drawer. So I think I'm that kind of person, but I do it in a way where it's quickly done. I'm a person who rushes these things. So sometimes I, I may not get the little bit of dirt or <laughs> a little bit of fruit is left on the dish. That's the, my kind of uh, uh, cleaning <laughs> standard. I don't make my bed either, to be honest with you. You don't? No, Wait, no. So what are you cleaning then? Why are you cleaning in the I'm first just cleaning place? things quickly. Is just... it just for the sake of you know making your wife happy? Exactly. exactly. It's exactly That's what it is. Is it not to hear any tons of you like not being nagged at exactly. all? Exactly. <laughs> but then she still nags afterwards. Like she's like, you know, that you left something on the plate. And I was like, well, at least I tried. I, know. <laughs> I think my mom could relate to that. She hates it when she has to do it again. Yes. And I think so you we... know what this say yeah. sorry happy wife a happy life yes. happy wife happy life and that <laughs> requires so cleaning upset these days. <laughs> <laughs> hey at least your wife's happy yes. it all comes down to cleaning and we asked our viewers if they like cleaning themselves if you take a look at the screen you can find out what three of them had to share with us and their know-hows on cleaning if they like it let's start with slav slav said i clean all day and every day i have such an impressive stash of all-purpose cleaners that i can probably open my own store <laughs> hannah said i'm officially a clean freak i can't walk past breadcrumbs in my house without picking them up my friends tease me me about it, but a clean home equals a peaceful mind, doesn't it? Tasmia said, I'm a bit of both. No side is ideal or perfect. Being obsessed with cleaning can give us physical and mental stress, while not cleaning means we're giving germs a chance to harm us. So I can tell that a lot of our viewers are clean freaks out there, which is really nice, but there's also definitely two distinct groups amongst our generation. While some love to clean like you, Kyun, there's also many like Walter <laughs> that can find cleaning to be a chore, and I can relate to that as mm -hmm. well. Now, Kyun, on 
on behalf of the tidy MZers out there, why don't you tell us just how popular cleaning has become among our generation and why it's being so popular in terms of YouTube content? Sure. Um, to give our viewers a better understanding of the growing popularity of cleaning among our generation, let's take a look at the screen. As you can see, the percentage of customers in their 20s and 30s purchasing cleaning supplies is 40% mm -hmm. according to Daiso, a company that sells daily life products. So obviously this number highlights youngsters' interest in cleaning. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned before, along with COVID lockdowns, worsening air pollution, especially here in Korea, and increasing one-person household, the way millennials and Gen Zs think of their homes has definitely changed. Mm -hmm. um, it's become a place to do just more than just sleep, eat and take a shower. Right. Now I think it's sharing one's cleaning methods and equipment mm -hmm. on social media has become a new trending culture here in Korea. So more people are spending time cleaning and mm -hmm. keeping their home spotless, making it feel more like a hotel. And like I said, you know, everybody likes going to a hotel, even little kids. I ask yeah. them, why do you like going to a hotel? And they say the same thing because it's, you know, it's cozy, it's clean and comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of uh, youngsters think of their homes the same way as a hotel. Like when they come home to a neat home, you know, they enter their room, it looks like a hotel, it's cozy, it helps right. you relax better. So I think, why not, Walter? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and as you mentioned, I think social media always plays an integral mm -hmm. part. People upload videos of mm. the before and after of the shots of their room. We're also seeing a lot of YouTubers or celebrities like Brian, as mm. you know, mm. upload their know-how, which motivates people to clean. But Walter, there's so many other adults like yourselves who find cleaning to be simply a chore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they would never consider it to be a relaxing way to relieve stress or a hobby, right? Like yeah. you don't think you don't go to cleaning as a way to relieve your stress per se. So tell us more on behalf of all these young adults out there who think that cleaning could be a chore. Well, here's the thing, right? I'm not to this extent to where uh, these people request things. So we have to actually take a look at the screen and I'll uh, show you what people are requesting these days when it comes to doing the daily chores. Now, as you can see, about 41% of MZers really can't be bothered leaving their places to go grocery shopping mm. or even getting something to eat for dinner. So they rely on someone to bring it to their door. By the way, guilty. 20% um, of MZers don't even want to get out of bed and request maids to do their cleaning around the house. For them, I mean, if you have the money, why not, in my yeah. opinion? And 12% of MZers would rather pay for services such as installation and assembling rather than doing it themselves. Uh, and, you know, or posting, you know, something to somewhere. Uh, remember, this can all be done from the comfort of your couch. So are we getting lazier? Most likely. And, but is it a very good service? Yes, indeed. <laughs> I mean, some might call it lazy. I could say we're just looking for efficiency and convenience. But, yes. you know, to better analyze this type of trend, we're going to include an expert in our talks, and he'll be explaining the discrepancy in cleaning habits and values among our generation. Stay tuned for our live interview. We're going to include a certified psychiatrist in the U.S. and Korea in our talks now. It's Dr. Chu Young Lee. Welcome, Dr. Lee. Hello. Glad to be here again. All right, Dr. Lee, as you heard from our panel's discussion, we are seeing such a large spectrum when it comes to liking cleaning. And there seems to be sort of a discrepancy between those who love cleaning and those who are a bit nonchalant in our generation. So could you first explain the psychology behind both groups? Okay, so first of all, I have to say uh, behavior like cleaning shows a normal distribution. This means most people will clean neither too often nor too rarely. Uh, but the behavior patterns on the extreme ends of the bell curve um, become captured more easily by the media due to their uh, uniqueness and uh, atypicality. I only can assume several possible um, psychological underpinnings of this clean, uh, cleaning behavior. First, cleaning may be an unconscious habit that is formed from early childhood growing up. 
Second, uh, cleaning can make one feel accomplished and feel good about oneself, making one feel better than people who don't clean as much, like I, like me. <laughs> in other cases, people may clean out of fear or anxiety. Uh, some may clean to disavow the feelings of dirtiness in them, and some may clean as a reaction to obsessive thoughts such as germ infestation. On the other hand, not cleaning can save the time and energy to do other activities, so it has some productive function. And some may have difficulty throwing things away out of anxiety, and that can be a hoarding disorder when it gets severe. Uh, Dr. Lee, uh, what does cleaning mean for our generation compared to our parents or even our grandparents' generations? Okay, so this is very highly individualized question. I believe there can only be many meanings uh, among, even among Gen Zs. So uh, one generalized meaning is really hard to be defined. Uh, but uh, there may be some major changes that our generation is noticing. Uh, there are newer cleaning products and more targeted commercials around them. And there is an increasing number of single member households which free people from external pressure to clean and allow establishing their own ritual of cleaning. Uh, and there is a social media platform which disproportionately shed light to extreme behaviors which would have been hidden in the past and never become a, t like a topic of discussion. Yes, and do you think we'll see more millennials and Gen Z treat cleaning as like a hobby or how does this improve our mental health? I unfortunately cannot give a good answer to this, but uh, there is just not enough statistical data to project this trend into the future. And there's no evidence that cleaning improves mental health. And like I said prior, excessive cleaning can be a manifestation of a psychiatric disorder even, such as uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. But generally, uh, behavioral activation is well known to improve mental health. So. Physically demanding uh, vigorous cleaning may be helpful for mental health. And what I can say for sure is that the trend of categorization and stereotyping, stereotyping the human behavior like cleaning will persist because it is a survival instinct. Stereotype um, allow a quick appraisal of others, whether they're a threat to ourselves or not. And this explains the popularity of uh, MBTI test as well. Mm, that's quite fascinating and hopefully we will see this trend continue as long as it's moderate and we don't see it go as far to obsession or OCD. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Yeah, likewise. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Thank you, Doctor. All right, and before I end off today's discussion topic, I would like to ask you guys on final notes on cleaning. And Kuhn, you mentioned that you love cleaning, so can you give your personal know-how for people out there who really want to clean their rooms, not to an excessive amount, but what would you do personally? Honestly, uh, I would make my bed. The first thing I'll do mm. sorry. <laughs> sorry. is make my bed. Sorry. Um, no, you don't need to be sorry about it. As Dr. Lee says, I think it's just a behavioral difference, yes. you know, but anywho. Mm. And obviously, you know, I'll continue to find more convenient and effective ways mm. to clean moving forward. And obviously, social media will definitely help. But personally, you know, with me, like, I think everything's about visual. If you mm. see things like disorganized, if you see a lot of like dishwashing to do, I get it done right away. Because mm. when I see things like neatly organized, it kind of, you know, helps me Soothes soothe, you. soothe yeah. me like mentally as well. And honestly, who wants to sleep? on a dirty bed, right. you know, so I like to dust it out, you know, wash my uh, linen, I like mm. every week, mm. you know, and I think it's like when you sleep, you don't want to sleep in, in like in, with germs or exactly. yeah, and, you know, not everyone is clean, <laughs> even yeah. though we take shower every day, we still can have a lot of germs, right. especially during um, our sleep. And I'd like to end off with <laughs> a famous speech made uh, by William McRaven. Um, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. Oh! If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. That is so nice. Do you remember that speech, that quote? It really encompasses <laughs> a lot because it really just shows that you have to be diligent enough to Definitely, make your bed yeah. in the morning. And as you mentioned, it's all about the visuals, mm. but also satisfaction. Definitely. The fact that you see something very dirty or messy and then you tidy it up, you see the, the immediate results. And I think that's really important for our generation, given the fact that it's really hard to buy a house these days. It's really hard to expand our wealth in a short amount of time. But cleaning brings you immediate satisfaction and results, which is why I 
think for myself, even after this discussion, I'm still on team cleaning. Mm. But then again, I do want to give like people the benefit of the doubt as to why they don't find it to be a hobby or a really quick remedy for their mental health. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about this side? <laughs> I just feel like, like I, I just feel dirty now, to be no. honest with you. Like, as I said, I'm not exactly a clean freak, but I do do my chores every day and mm. it's out of routine rather than it being like, oh my God, I got I, I to I gotta do this and I got to do that. But, you know, for me, I do make sure that, you know, we, I shed a lot of hair. My wife sheds a lot of hair. Our daughter <laughs> sheds a lot of hair. We vacuum every day. Right. I thought vacuuming every day was actually a, like too much at one point, but mm. now I get it. And washing the dishes, obviously, they don't get they don't get stored overnight. You know, you know the old excuse, I'll just soak it yeah, overnight. I know. <laughs> and it's just like a bowl of cereal that doesn't need to be soaked or or like, oh, I'll use that a bit later. Yeah. I do make sure those basic chores are done and that they, that we are right. a clean house. Now, as I said, I wouldn't go to the levels of my wife. So my wife is one of those people who if she's out in the Mise Monji too, okay, this might be make me sound dust. dirty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If she's out in the find us for even you know, 10 minutes, she has to wash her clothes. Am I alone in that or is, do you? I, do you, I agree, I, I, because it's fine dust. You don't want it in your house, especially if you have a kid. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I don't do that. So like, I try to, you know, I do wash my clothes, but I don't do to that extreme. Right. But I do do the minimum standard, I think. My wife does it to the maximum, so we right. do meet halfway and it is helping each other out in a way. But yes, I do understand that, yes, Making your bed is the you know first chore of the day and, I and think, it gets right, it out of the way. Today's episode isn't about promoting cleaning. I think basically we're trying to say that there is a spectrum. There are those types of people who find satisfaction with the immediate results from clean, but there's also people that just find it to be a chore that they just do the bare minimum and everyone has different standards. But at the end of the day, understanding that this is a spectrum and not isolating either group seems to be key. Now in the meantime, we'll be here every day from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Korea time, bringing you more topics young people are talking about. Special thanks to Park ki -hun. Thanks for having me. And Walter Lee. Lovely to be here. All right, and thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We are News Generation. Generation.